Hi and welcome back. I'm your host, Attorney Michael Potter. And in this segment, we're examining why you should use a retirement trust as the beneficiary of your IRA or any other tax-deferred retirement plan. Now, there are some pretty restrictive rules that apply when it comes to naming a trust as a beneficiary of a retirement plan. And that is why you want to stay away from naming your living trust as a beneficiary. It is much better to use a standalone retirement inheritance trust so that it is entirely separate and it only receives retirement assets. Now currently federal law specifies that when you attain a certain age, which right now is 70 and a half, you must begin taking distributions from the accumulated savings. However, you're typically not going to take them all at once. You're going to take them a little bit at a time. Now many people choose to take the minimum required distribution because they want to stretch it out. But if you should die, before taking all the money out, a beneficiary is typically named for your retirement account. Now, if the beneficiary of your retirement plan is a spouse, that's pretty common. It happens all the time. However, just be aware that if you don't use a retirement trust as the beneficiary, and the money goes directly to your spouse, you are not around and you have no control over how that money gets spent, how it is held, what it's invested in, and the risk of loss is much higher than if you used a retirement trust as the beneficiary. Your spouse is under no legal obligation to follow your wishes, whereas the trustee of the trust is. Now, depending on how you arrange the beneficiary designation, if you have a much younger person as the beneficiary, then the distributions will be based upon their age and their life expectancy. And this can be very valuable. And that is why we want to use a retirement trust. Why use a trust? Well, certainly it's because the use of a trust, as opposed to just designating a person, allows for that money to be protected in case your beneficiary marries the wrong spouse, or gets involved in a lawsuit, or goes through a divorce, or is a spendthrift. So it is a way to protect the assets inside of the retirement trust from being lost due to bad judgment or mistakes or just bad luck. So let's say you don't use a trust and you just nominate a person as the beneficiary. Well there's several things that can happen and I thought it would be good just to list a few of them here. So by using a trust, we're able to bypass some of the disadvantages that often occur when you simply nominate a natural person to receive the beneficial interest after your death and they receive the account. Because when they do, several things can go wrong. One of the things that could go wrong is that the person's creditors might very well have access to the funds that you wanted them to have for income over their entire remaining lifetime. So, for example, maybe an ex-spouse, or maybe a lawsuit creditor, or some other type of financial creditor could obtain access to the account and take the money away. You don't want that.
and there's the risk of the court interfering with your plans if that person should become incapacitated. You wouldn't have that problem if you use a retirement inheritance trust. So instead of the minimum required distributions being paid directly to a person as a beneficiary, instead they would be paid to the retirement trust, the standalone retirement trust, as the beneficiary for the benefit of the people that you want to receive the money. You see the difference? It allows you to specify the terms and conditions and the trust itself doesn't have the same disadvantages that an individual would have. It gives you a much more favorable outcome. Now one of the things that I like about this particular kind of trust is that within the trust document we can name successor beneficiaries, maybe a second generation, in case the first generation should pass away before the account is fully paid out. And that allows those funds to still be protected even for the second generation. Now using a retirement trust is going to give you much better control and much better protection for those tax deferred accounts over a very long period of time. And as I said, if you've got a younger beneficiary and they have a longer life expectancy, then using the trust is going to protect them, it's going to protect the assets from being taken away, it's going to preserve that account over a very long period of time that will give continuing income to your chosen beneficiaries. So let's say that you named your children or better yet grandchildren as beneficiaries of the retirement inheritance trust. Now the younger they are the longer their life expectancy and you can use that to their advantage with your planning using the retirement trust. So let's look at an example to see how this functionally works. Now in the graphic that you see in the slide, uh, an IRA account owner has uh, three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary. And he has four grandchildren, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. And uh, in this case, where one of the beneficiaries doesn't have any children, then in the event that beneficiary dies, it passes down to the siblings and then passes down to the grandchildren. It's a great way to protect those assets using a standalone retirement inheritance trust. And of course, there's no guardian needed if a minor is the beneficiary. And there's no chance of an interference by a court in the case of someone becoming incapacitated because the trust is separate from the individual that you want to have as beneficiary. By using the retirement trust, you avoid all of the potential disadvantages and you get all of the advantages of using a standalone retirement trust. Well, I've given you a lot to think about, huh? And I want to encourage you to contact myself or my staff. We're here to help you. This is based on federal tax law, and we will be glad to show you the right path forward. I'm attorney Michael Potter. And I look forward to hearing from you.